gastroesophageal reflux disease. What many people write in short form as GORD. This is what is done by uh, European people and American people. They write as GERD. Both meaning the same. So before I discuss this topic, let me discuss some basic concept what the disease is. For that, we got to know the, some basic anatomy. So in the basic concepts, here is the esophagus, lower end of esophagus, and here is the stomach. And this is the lower end of esophagus. And there is a sphincter, so-called lower esophageal sphincter. It is a physiological sphincter. That means normally it remains closed. But when, the, uh, when a person takes the food, then it gets open. So it is not an anatomical sphincter, but a physiological sphincter. This is point number one to remember. It is physiological. Second thing, the lining of this is squamous cell. Okay. Now, when we talk about GERD, there is dysfunction of LES. That means it remains patent even without swelling also. With the result, the acid content of the stomach, it keep on entering into this lower end of esophagus. And this is what is known as reflux disease, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, when the repeated acid comes <clears throat> for maybe minimum five years, then some changes occur in the pathology. Now this lining, which is normally is so-called squamous cell lining, I'm drawing this one, squamous cell lining, it start becoming columnar lining. This epithelial, that means in not shell, the epithelial cells are replaced by the columnar cell. And this is known as intestinal metaplasia. And this is what is known as Barrett's esophagus. And it is a dangerous because it is a pre-malignant condition. And the common carcinoma that can occur in this is adenocarcinoma. Adenocarcinoma is 40 times more common in Barrett's esophagus as compared to normal population. So with this small background of the basic concept, now let us see what are the conditions which predispose to uh, esophageal reflux disease. Smoking is a very, very important predisposing factor. It means what? We'll ask the patient to stop smoking when we will be treating the case. Similarly, alcohol intake and hernia, high test hernia, pregnancy, obesity. It's very common in obese people. And of course, there are certain drugs like tricyclic antidepressant, anticholinergic, and nitrate, which are all which can relax the lower esophageal sphincter, can predispose to reflux disease. Obesity, pregnancy, these two, because of high amount of pressure in the abdomen, they can cause reflux disease. Now, who are the patients at high risk? Other than what I mentioned, which are predisposing male over 45 years with long-standing GERD symptoms. They are more prone to uh, Barrett's esophagus. History of severe gastritis, Tobago abuse with weekly GERD symptom, obese people, and elderly with reflux. They all predispose to Barrett's esophagus. Remember, disease is more in males as compared to females. What are the symptoms? As I told you, disease is more in males because of the, so many reasons, because males are more alcoholic, more smoking, and of course obesity can be there in both the male and female. Now, most common symptom is heartburn. Patient complained of retrosternal pain, which is burning in character. And this is radiate up to the chest, especially related to meals. It's very common after meals and lying down, especially after meals, stooping 
and straining. It is relieved by N test because it is going to neutralize the <coughs> acid. Belching is another symptom of GERD. Acid brash, what is this? Patient complains that that acidic so called sore fluid come to the stomach. This is the regurgitation of acid right up to the mouth. Water brash, what is the mean by water brash? Excess of salivation. This is water brash. Odinophagia is painful swallowing. Nocturnal asthma because the acid may enter the lungs also from the mouth. Now let us see what, are the, what complication can occur in these patients. Well, this is the lower end of esophagus, stomach we this talked just now. This acid goes in the lower end of esophagus. This lead to esophagitis. It can even lead to ulcer formation. And sometime when the ulcer heal or when this pathology heals, it may lead to benign structures. But as I told you, it can lead to Barrett's esophagus, which is nothing, nothing but the intestinal metaplasia. And adenocarcinoma can develop. And these are sometimes when they, they develop ulcer, they keep on bleeding slowly, slowly, and that can lead to iron deficiency anemia. Now, what are the extra esophageal complications? Dental erosion. Why? Let's learn the basic concept. This is the esophagus, and this is the ultimate esophagus, and here is the mouth. When acid comes to the mouth, so called what? Acid brash. I discussed I discuss a couple of minutes back. This acid is coming into the mouth, we call it acid brash. And constant com coming of acid into the mouth, it can lead to dental erosion because it will destroy the dental. Now this acid may enter the airway. Here is the airway. And it can, once it enter the airway, it can lead to laryngitis. Acid going to larynx, definitely going to cause laryngitis. And as acid will enter into the airway, it will lead to chronic cough. And of course, in the advanced stages, it can even lead to bronchospasm, so-called asthma. So this is sequently, all are in just math mathematical way going in sequence. Now, what are the red flag sign of GERD? The red flag signs are dysphagia that means obstruction is there odinophagia that means he has painful swallowing that is severe esophagitis is there weight loss this suggests dysphagia or odinophagia is again a bad sign early satiety or vomiting that means some obstruction is there aspiration Wheezing or cough, that means acid is entering into the airways, which we just discussed. GI bleed, that means massive ulceration is there, which can even precipitate iron deficiency anemia. And we have, we have a male patient coming with iron deficiency anemia, we don't know reason. One thing you got to remember, any male patient coming with iron deficiency anemia, GI bleed should be ruled out, that you learn, you have to learn the golden statement maybe G, remember gi bleed maybe upper maybe lower also okay now we got one patient we clinically we suspect by history seem to be a case of gerd now how to investigate first of all we have to demonstrate the mucosal injury ultimately the first thing is mucosa is damaged so what the investigation of choice upper gi endoscopy is the first investigation of choice investigation of choice and what we see in actually when we do endoscopy we get velvety appearance of lower end of esophagus 
we can do barium swallow this especially we do when we are finding some obstruction is there okay of course when we do endoscopy if we are finding uh, obstruction we can take biopsy also now we have to documentation of reflux and quantification of reflux for that 24 hour uh, esophageal pH monitoring pH monitoring in the lower end of esophagus is the most sensitive test uh, to demonstrate uh, GERD now regarding pathophysiological factor that means mortality study this we do only in selected cases where we think the GERD is due to some dismortality like in scleroderma so this is not a routine test to be done in all the patients only selected patients now remember the few things that you got to remember most sensitive test for GERD is 24 hour pH monitoring of the lower end of esophagus and the most accurate test for bad esophagus is biopsy they are very very important point now treatment patient come with mild symptom of uh, GERD proton pump inhibitor the usual doses but persist symptom persists or you document erosive esophagitis then we can give antacid antacid have a very quick symptomatic relief why because they are going to neutralize the acid immediately so they are very good for symptomatic treatment but they do not help in he much healing then we can give proton pump inhibitor are the most effective uh, drug in the, when we are finding persistent you are, then you have to give full dose of proton pump inhibitor or if you are getting a routine dose uh, initially if not get, getting control now you give full dose or you increase the dose of PPI or you change the uh, type of PPI and pro drug they help in the forward uh, movement but remember they are the drug therapy but I hope you remember that in these patients uh, we ask the patient to lose the body weight we ask the patient to stop smoking as I was talking to you and if he's taking some drug like nitrate or tikka or anticholinergic they should be avoided as far as possible and any reason which can predispose to GRD should be controlled as I taught you earlier now surgery is not needed unless symptoms are very severe and not being controlled by drug therapy and patient has severe problem then you think about doing some surgery only 5% patient need, need surgery not everyone needs and what surgical procedure we do Nissen fundoplication this is wrapping up stomach around lower end of esophagus and this especially we do when patient has high test hernia and endo cinch using a scope to place a suture around the lower end of esophagus to tighten it and local heat or radiation to cause scarring now treatment of Barrett's esophagus if we are finding pre malignant changes high grade dysplasia seen on endoscopy then we can do fundoplication or we can initially try with high dose of PPI if PPI doesn't work then you can think this is the first thing to be done and if this is the second next step if not being controlled second thing is photodynamic treatment this involves light induced activation of orally administered photosensitizer like 5 amino levolinic acid this causes the accumulation of protoporphyrin 9 in GI mucosal cell and which later on causes necrosis which is and how do you know that when you do repeat endoscopy after four to eight weeks you find re-epithelization has occurred repeat endoscopy must every two to three years uh, when we are having a case of circa uh, bears esophagus many thought is even they write in yearly also ultimately is to do the follow-up via repeat endoscopy is mandatory 
then a quick recap of the last minute revision point so GERD is the dysfunction of the lower end of esophagus Bennett esophagus this intestinal metaplasia is there the common symptom include heartburn which is retosternal complication can be esophagitis it can be uh, ulcer it can be iron deficiency anemia Barrett esophagus and carcinoma extra esophageal complication dental erosion it could be laryngitis cuff and asthma red flag sign include weight loss dysphagia odinophagia are the some of the red flag signs Doc documentation of mucosal injury is by endoscopy you get velvety appearance documentation reflux is by de demonstrating 24 hour ph monitoring at the lower end of esophagus ppi the usual dose or later on you increase the dose or if not you go for surgery thank you very much for watching this video